Hi, I'm Courtney Holler, and I teach Engineering 180, Communication and Design Thinking at Boise State University. In today's talk, I'll be discussing some of the techniques that I've implemented in this course to adapt to our online environment. Engineering 180, Communication and Design Thinking is a freshman level course offered at Boise State University. Prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, this class was taught face-to-face. Most classes included frequent in-class activities where students would work in partners or with a group in order to explore various topics such as empathy for their client or developing interview questions. Furthermore, the last third of the semester is spent on students developing a physical prototype for their client who has asked them to develop an assistive device in order to help them complete everyday tasks. Now that Engineering 180 has been taught remotely for the past two semesters, it was necessary to make changes to the course in order to remain engaging to students while in an online environment. Allowing students to write out their ideas on whiteboards was a typical face-to-face -face activity used in Engineering 180. In a virtual setting, an interactive whiteboard can be created by using Google Slides. Students can work individually, in partners, or with a group to come up with responses to the prompt. If the prompt is more extensive, groups can work on their own side based on the breakout group number they're in. For example, breakout group 3 would work on the slide that has a title of breakout group 3. Once students have had an opportunity to respond to the prompt, students can then comment on other people's responses. By asking students to comment on other people's responses, this allows them an opportunity to look for connections and differences. This slide is an example of an activity that can be completed using the interactive whiteboard approach. The instructions and prompt are written at the top of the slide. In this case, students have been asked to come up with as many uses for a paperclip. As students work on brainstorming all of the uses of a paperclip, they can copy and paste the sticky notes to add as many ideas to the whiteboard as possible. If some of the ideas relate to each other or other groups are leaving comments, the sticky notes can be attached to each other to show that these ideas are related. Google Slides can also be used to foster class discussions. With this technique, the prompt is written on a Google Slide that students have access to viewing on their own devices. I typically find that it's helpful to make these slides available in advance for students to access. Students are then put into virtual breakout rooms by placing between two to four students in each breakout room, this ensures that the groups are small enough that each student will have an opportunity to give their input. And many students have found that the smaller breakout groups give them a chance to get to know their classmates as well as feeling more comfortable to have a discussion. While students are in their breakout rooms, they identify someone who will report the key takeaways from their group's discussion. Once all groups are back in the main room, the reporter from each group shares their main ideas related to the prompt. While these key findings are being shared, the instructor compiles these responses into Google Slides. Compiling the responses also helps to facilitate additional discussions about similarities and differences in a visual way. In Engineering 180, presentations are a significant portion of the course. In order to allow students to present their group project while remaining in a virtual environment, screen share and screen recording techniques are used. Many students are not personally familiar with how to create a Zoom meeting or any of the host capabilities. As a result, it is important to walk students through the process of creating Zoom meeting and sending the information to their group members. From there, the process of how to share a screen and start a recording in a Zoom meeting is explained. In order for students to give a group presentation, one student, who is the Zoom host, will share their screen, which has the presentation slides. When the group is ready to start presenting, the recording is started and each student presents their slides. As a final product, the recording contains a voiceover of the slides, the slides themselves, and the video of the students presenting. In order to allow for the rest of the class to view each other's presentations, a shared Google Drive can be created. By creating a class Google Drive, each team can upload their video presentations. Creating a Google Slide file for each team allows for the rest of the class to leave comments and feedback. A template of the questions to provide feedback can be included in each team's Google Slide file as well, so that each student can copy and paste the template and respond directly to these questions.
The use of Zoom and Google Drive can help to replicate the interaction that typically occurs when groups give presentations in a face-to-face -face setting. A project involving teaching a partner how to use Tinkercad was added to the course in order to better prepare students in creating their own virtual prototypes. By asking students to create step-by-step -step procedures to share with the partner about how to build an object in Tinkercad, this allowed students to learn the basics of Tinkercad and also get familiar enough with the software to teach one of their classmates. Since Engineering 180 has moved to the online environment, including this project has allowed students to feel more prepared and comfortable with creating a virtual project later on in the semester for their assistive project. Overall, it is much more difficult for students to pay attention in an online environment. Although we may tell them to stay away from other devices such as their phone and to close all other internet tabs and apps, giving their undivided attention to a screen these days can be very difficult. There's a reason why people are calling it Zoom fatigue. As an instructor, limiting talking time to 10 to 15 minutes without any student interaction will help to ensure that students remain engaged in your course. After 10 to 15 minutes of talking time, consider using breakout rooms to give students a chance to discuss questions with their classmates. Other options include using breakout rooms as a way for students to share the responses to an individual prompt or to discuss homework, allowing them time to work through an in-class problem. Outside of class, it may be difficult for students now more than ever to meet with their group. Therefore, setting aside time in class to work on their group project can help to ensure that each group has enough time to complete the project and talk with their group. As an online class, oftentimes information is being sent to students in a written format. By mixing up the formats of how information is shared, this helps to ensure that various preferred learning styles are being addressed. For example, Creating an audio or video recording of an announcement or email can help give the students a break from written instruction. Furthermore, help students keep track of due dates by developing a routine of presenting a due date slide at the end of each class. Re-emphasize these due dates when sending out a weekly email can help give students a heads up about the content that will be covered this upcoming week. Based on student reflections and meetings from the past two semesters, most students have found that these techniques have been useful in making an online course feel more like a face-to-face -face course. Even if you aren't able to implement all of these techniques into your course, using one or two of these techniques or taking inspiration from them can help students better adapt to the online environment during this challenging time. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me at CourtneyHoller at BoiseState.edu, and thank you.